Rich family, we're so excited to be worshiping with you this morning, and we hope that you're healthy, and we can't wait to see you. Make sure that you share and like this post. Make sure that all your friends and family are able to see it, since we can't be together in person. So let's worship, and God, we just ask you to come this morning and bless us, bless us in this church, bless us in our homes. And just let us feel your presence, that you're with us no matter where we are, God. We thank you, Jesus.
freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like
victory, to my victory. Jesus. 
us. It's time to move forward, onward, Christian soldiers. It's time to move forward. So Lord God, we just bless that word right now. And we ask that you would give us the strength and the tenacity to move forward in courage without fear, God. We ask that you would endure us with the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would give us clarity of thought and of mind. I pray, God, that you would help your people, Lord God, to break free from the chains that have held them in their past, God, and that they would begin to move forward and operate in the new levels of freedom that you have called them into. Help them to move from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Father God, I thank you that you are, God, bringing new people into the realization of who they're meant to be in the five-fold ministry. I see commissions happening right now, and I thank you, Lord, Father God, that you're bringing an awareness of people to understand who they are in the body of Christ. God, this won't even be a question anymore. Some of you have questioned, do I even fit in? Do I even belong? Do I have a purpose here? But the Lord would say to you, fret not, my child, and don't ask these questions anymore because I'm bringing resolution to your heart today. You belong in my body. I have purposed you. I have equipped you. I have anointed you, and I have ordained you for such a time as this. Do not question who you are. Do not question what you're meant to do, but instead move forward in the plans and purposes I have for you. And the Lord would say this to you, don't make it about what you do. Step into who you were meant to be, because what you do will flow out of who you are. So Lord, Father God, I thank you right now that you are giving us revelation of identity, revelation and understanding of who we're meant to be in you, and that we don't have to worry about what lies behind, but we can press forward in all that you have for us now. As we close the session of worship right now. I just want to, I want to sing this one more time. I want you to begin to sing this with us. That God stepped into your Egypt and he brought you to a new place. And I want you to begin to thank God for the new place that he brought you into. And the past is no more, but you're into your best days now. You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom into the promised land now i will not forget you i'll sing of all you've done death this swallowed up forever by the fury of come on help me preach guys you stepped into my egypt you took me by the hand you marched me out in freedom into the promised land Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Just lift your hands. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this place. We thank you for all that you're doing. Holy Spirit, we just say yes and amen. We receive the word spoken over each and every one of us. I wanna put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord, I receive that word. For Lord, I know that you are the Lord of breakthroughs and the sound of many waters, Lord God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, that you watch over your own words to perform them. 
So we give you a yes and an amen to all that you are doing, to this time and this place, this moment in history, we say yes, we say amen. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. And everyone said amen. Thank you, team. Awesome time of worship. I'll call you back in just a moment. When we look back at this time in history, we'll look back at this social distancing period in our history and say, that was the moment that the Lord of breakthroughs met me. It is all about the little things that are being done right now. And I want to encourage you that are at home. I want you to exhort you right now. It is the acts of kindness. It's the sowing of the seed of reaching out and sowing those seeds of love, those seeds of the acts of kindness, those seeds of the faithfulness, financial faithfulness that is happening right now. It is these moments, not when there was a big crowd, not when anybody was around. Jesus said, Lord, they would come to him and they would say, oh, when did we feed you? When did we clothe you, Lord? And he said, when you did as much as to one of these, you did it unto me. That's what's happening right now in the spirit. The meals that are going out and, and everybody rallying and say, how can I help you? How can I do this? How can I do that for you? And the acts of kindness, are you okay? And all the Texas right now that are building the body and connecting the body during this time of separation, that is when the breakthrough came. It is the decisions that are made in the only in the secret place that will be honored and openly declared. Come on, receive the word of God right now. This is a miracle moment, and your miracle is right there. And I hear the sound of many waters. It's in the spirit. There is a sound of many waters. There is a sound of a brand new season that is just at the doorstep. God's promises are yes and amen. And he is unfailing. In Jesus' name. And everyone said right at home, Amen. Come on, give the Lord, give the Lord a hand. Now, I got one applause, and that was great. In this huge building, we got an applause. Thank you, worship team. Well, we love you, and we thank you, and this just been an awesome week, and there's just been so much going on, and, and really, I felt all week long just proud and as a spiritual father in a good sense in every way. I hear what's going on. I hear that you're doing a good job. And Bridge family, I'm speaking to you right now and, and our friends that are all over the nation that have been tuning in. Sure, great, encouraging to see you and see the pop-ups from Texas and Indiana and, and uh, the Carolinas all over, Oregon, everywhere. We just thank you for all that you're doing. And we were blessed, and you've been doing such a great job financially. We've had folks just walking in, and the mail, and everything coming in, and your faithfulness. God sees every single one of our faithfulness. He even talks about in Proverbs how he that waters is going to be watered himself. And God is doing it. So I want to pray over you real quick, and then I want to break into the Word. But... God honors what's done in secret. So hold out your hand, just like that we're here like normal. Or you might want to get out your wallet and you can go to online and the, you can go right there and say give online. Go to the uh, Bridge website. Go to there, thebridge530.com and you can give online. You can bring it in, send it in uh, through the mail to 1104 J Street. And some of you have even dropped it by and we just thank you for that. But Father, we thank you right now for the faithfulness of your family and your children. Lord, we thank you for all that's going on and all the change. And again, we just say yes and amen to that prophetic declaration. Lord, we're not moving, staying still. We're not living in the past, but we're moving forward. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for provision. I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us wisdom and you've given us seed to sow. We bless that right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, every penny, Lord, let it go into the harvest. Lord, send us into what's ahead. Break us out of those old things and old places. Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, 
Amen. Well, I want to share today a little bit, and you can go to Matthew 28. And I felt in my devotional time and just thinking that I wanted to preach a little bit more on the week after Easter. And here we are in 2020, and we're the week after Easter Sunday. And I want to read a few texts with you, and then I want to go back and share a couple points and some things that started out. And if you're taking notes, write down what's next with a big question mark. Isn't that amazing that right now we're asking, what now? What next? What next? We're not going back to what we were. We're moving forward into his purpose. And and everyone wants to know, God, what's next? Holy Spirit, what's next? And, And isn't it awesome that we go through a time like this where we're separated and even when we're in it, we begin to ask ourselves, what is this for? And what are you doing? See, in the context of the story, and I want to get into the story. There's a story and there's a message and there's a lesson to learn right here in Matthew 28. But I want to read right now for the context and then we're going to break out and go into the word a little bit. I'm going to, you can write down in your notes, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to primarily be in verses 5 through 10 and that's where we're going to park today. Now after the Sabbath, as the first, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. And the guards shook for the fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And as he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. Finally, in 9 and 10, as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid, but go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there you will see me. Help us Holy Spirit and break open the word now. If you notice in verse five, there an angel of the Lord was sent and he said this, do not be afraid. Then again in verse 10, Jesus who meets them and says, rejoice. And then the next thing he says, do not be afraid. There is something here that you must, we must get a hold of. You say, well, wait a minute. Let's get into the story for a moment. Pastor, help me understand. Let's get into the story and the lesson. Why does the angel say, do not be afraid. Well, of course, because they are, they're in uncharted waters. They're in places they've never seen before. They just had a week that who started out really super good, but it ended horribly. Jesus would tell them last week, and this is reviewing from Easter Sunday, all of you are gonna stumble because of me. And they'll all step up and say, oh, no, no, I won't deny you. And they, and they all did. That's the disciples. They slept through the prayer meeting in the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas ends up betraying Jesus. People cried out and Pilate tried to give. Jesus said, hey, well, this man has, nothing, has done nothing wrong, but the people chose Barabbas. Jesus was mocked. He was beaten, stripped, and ultimately crucified. All the disciples forsook and fled. 
then even Jesus is the least likely three men we shared last week step up. They took action, they were courageous, and they stood in faith, and they took care of him. What a week that was. Now we see this is the beginning, Chris, of the beginning of a brand new week. And two Marys go to check it out. There's a lot of checking out and thinking, what's next now? Where are we going to go from here? Where are we going to go? Where there's already the talk of starting up the country again. And, and our president is giving instructions and he's saying, May 1st, what's next? How are we going to do this? We live in a nation right now that is in uncharted water. What's next? What's next? What is this next season going to look like? I can imagine Mary Magdalene and the other Mary going down. What is this going to be like? What's it going to be like when we get to there? What's this next week? It's the dawning of the new day of a new week. Isn't that prophetically what we're saying? You're at the dawn of a new day right now. And God, the Holy Spirit is speaking to each and every one of us. And you're at home. I'm telling you right now, you're at the dawn of a new day. What's it going to look like? Holy Spirit, show us. I thank you that you're the helper and you're going to show us things to come. You'll guide us and you'll teach us and you will show us things to come. Come Holy Spirit and teach us right now. See, Mary and Mary, they had stepped up. They'd seen the faith of Nicodemus. They'd seen the courage of the Roman centurion. They had seen the action that Joseph and Mary Arimathea had taken. And they said, you know what? We're going to step up. Isn't that least likely? Mary Magdalene, who was a former prostitute, she's in a moment of breakthrough. I'm going to go to that tomb to see. And the other Mary goes with her. And on their way, there's a great earthquake in verse two. Man, they were shaking, and all of a sudden, there's the angel of the Lord appears, and he rolls back the stone, and he sits on it. Listen to this. In verse three, his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. Mary and Mary are stunned. I've been amazed at some of the things that have happened. Never thought that we would go through what we're going through. But there's all of a sudden, now they are stunned again with the earthquake again happens. They're shaken. Remember, do not be afraid. The angel of the Lord or an angel of the Lord will say, do not be afraid. And there's a point here that I want to get and I want that to sink into every one of our hearts. Do not be afraid. There's a reason the Holy Spirit is emphasizing this. Do not be afraid. Isn't this amazing that the truth, the truth of the story, here's this, an angel of the Lord who has the appearance of lightning. Have you ever had lightning sit on a stone and speak to you? And it was, and that lightning bolt that is sitting there is telling you, do not be afraid. Whoa. Good. And if that isn't bad enough, he looked over there and the guards that were guarding the tomb are laying like dead men. Slain out, laid out, the power of God. Boom. I can talk about a dawn of a new day. Wow. Reach up and grab that and declare that. Oh, I'm at the dawn of a new day. Yes. Now the Holy Spirit, the lightning of God, the fire of God that's going to come and speak to me and encourage me right now. Whew. The angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Look at this right now. God knows your heart. Just like Mary and Mary and Mary went, you don't have to ask the angel. He is there to communicate. They don't even have to say a word. He already says, I know you see Jesus. Come on, there's messages that are coming to you right now because you're a seeker of Jesus. Whew. I know your heart. I know you want answers. 
God has sent his Holy Spirit so that we will know what he is doing. Wow. Do not be afraid. And that really translates, do not be alarmed. You might think, really? Earthquake, men are laid out. There's lightning sitting on a rock speaking to me. And he says, do not be afraid. And it translates, do not be alarmed. For I know that you seek Jesus. That word to seek Jesus means you're a worshiper. You're one who has many questions. You're very inquisitive by the, the Spirit of God in you. is very inquisitive, wants to know what's up, Jesus. What is up, God? I'm searching for an answer. Maybe you're out there today and you're just searching for answers. There's a messenger on his way to deliver the answer to you. I just want to learn more. This social distancing has put me out, and now I have this hunger for community. I have a hunger to know the Word of God. There's this hunger that has come from somewhere, and it wasn't me. Whew. I want to learn, and I want to understand. Our God has put a heart and desire in us to understand what's next in this life. What's next? He will say to him in verse six, he is not here for he is risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. God wants us to know what's next and he doesn't want any of us to be guessing what the next thing is or the next move. God wants us to know he wants us to come and see. He is saying, come follow me now. Come follow me at the dawning of this new day, this new season. I want you to come and follow me afresh, just like where we started. With a freshness of when I first knew you. Lord, come follow me now. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. God wants us to know. He wants us to understand. Come and see literally means that. Follow him now in this season. Come now. There's an open invitation. Come now and step into the new season with him. See and you'll understand. I'll make you aware of my will for your life. Come and see. Wow. We're being prepared yes. for a new season. I believe this whole thing has been pre to prepare the church for a new season and a fresh revelation. Verse seven, they're an instruction for our future. And here will the angel of the Lord that looks like lightning sitting on a rock that is speaking to them will say, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. The phrase here I want to focus on, go quickly. Don't delay. Go quickly. Write this down. Don't delay. It's time to lead others. It's time to reach out to others. It's time to step up and not do more, but be who you're called to be. Do not delay now. Go quickly. Receive encouragement right now. You're doing good, but you're going into a new season. What was will not be. What is, is now. Go quickly. Step into your calling. Step into that position of leadership. Step back into that burden. Step back into that prayer closet. Step back into that prophetic calling. Go quickly now, go quickly. Do not delay. Do not miss the moment of divine momentum. Come on, I wanna say that again. I want you to write that in. Don't miss this moment of divine momentum. What is before us, we have never seen before. You can't live in the past in a new season. Yes. Do not miss the moment of divine momentum. Now here's really key, church. Really, really key for us. 
I need to move out of Matthew 28 for a moment and get the same story in Mark 16, verse 7. These are instructions for the future. Do not miss the day, the moment of divine momentum. Go quickly. Step into your calling now. Step into this new season now. Then he will say this in Mark 16, 7. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee and there you will see him as he said to you. Why did he break out and Peter? If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down, church. Don't leave anyone behind. Some are gonna need more encouragement than others. Some are gonna need you to go and get up and go get them and bring them into their new season. Peter is so bummed out, he followed, he got up and oh, he denied, but he got up and followed and he was there. But he needed an extra encouragement to not miss the divine momentum. There are those that are around us right now that need to be encouraged, need to be exhorted. Don't miss this next season and this moment. Go get Peter. Holy Spirit, show their, uh, us their faces right now. To every single person I haven't seen or heard from them, where have they been in this last season? Go get them. Open the door, Lord, and help me. God is gonna show you, he's gonna give you names and you will intercede. He will show you faces and the Holy Spirit is already there drawing them and encourage them and you will be his hand, you will be his feet, you will be his mouthpiece and you will go love on them. Don't let a single person miss this moment of divine momentum and opportunity. Go get the Peters. Verse eight, Whew. I'm gonna close right here in these two, Matthew seven and eight, because I really want that to sink in for a moment. Don't miss your moment of divine momentum and don't leave anyone behind. Go get them, gather everyone. We'll be back soon. We're gonna be back together soon. And this season is already passing. It's already going through. And we're there we're working all the logistics out. The season and the door of separation has already begun to close. Look around. Step into the new season. Prepare for what's ahead, just ahead. And go get those who need to be encouraged. Finally, as we close and the worship team can come back, he will say, tell his disciples, the Lord is gonna put a word in your mouth to go tell his disciples. And he is raising up mouthpieces and those who will step up and will bring the word of encouragement. They'll bring the word of exhortation. They'll bring the word, the very word that is needed. Go tell my disciples. I'm calling them into a new season. He's gonna build and re he's gonna build foundations and he's gonna rebuild foundations. There is truth and power in the word and deed. Both word and deed. Get ready to speak forth the word of God. And finally, they went out and they went quickly. Get ready, church, to move quickly. The hour is already begun. The new dawning of a new day is already here. Whew. Get ready. This building is not gonna be empty for very much longer. I'll be able to walk over you and grab your hand again and give you a hug. But you we will look back at this season and we grew more during this season than any of the last 10 or 20 years. It was just a season of divine momentum. And I don't want anybody to miss it. 
I want you to be, you're right on time, you're doing a great job, you're stepping up and you're doing all the things that the Holy Spirit is prompting to you. I'm hearing the stories and the testimony. Be of good cheer, rejoice. The Lord has much for each and every one of us. If you're watching and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, right now you can receive Jesus. I believe in my heart that you are Lord. I believe that you died for me on the cross and that you were raised up and resurrected on the third day. And I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my heart, come into my life. Lord, I believe and I open the door of my heart and I sense you knocking right now and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. You can know the joy that's unspeakable and an incredible walk for the rest of your life. Just like Mary Magdalene in this story, she was a former prostitute, but yet she has the great honor to be there on the dawning of a new season. Doesn't matter what we've gone through, it's all about where we're going and who we're going with you'll receive Jesus into your heart. Maybe you've been cold and your relationship has been a bit cold lately. There's fresh fire for you and God is there for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. We'll be back on Monday, I mean Wednesday, and uh, the week is just going by super fast. We'll be back on Wednesday. We'll be back again next week. We love you. We bless you. I can't wait to see you. Hallelujah. Let's worship together. You can give online, send in all the blessings. God is doing incredible miracles and miracles are on your way. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Two.